and welcome to the Owatonna Today Show. I'm Shelley White and happy Monday. Happy Martin Luther King Jr. holiday to you. Hopefully you get to celebrate in the way you would like to. We want to thank you for joining us here today on the Owatonna Today Show. You can check us out six days a week right here on Charter Channel 8. But if for some reason you missed the show or you didn't get a chance to record it, you can always check us out on YouTube or blip.tv. We'd love to have you join us. We're also always looking for great information. If you have something that you'd like to share with us on the show, please let us know. You can do that by emailing us at owatonnatoday at charter.net or you can give Leanne Alt a call. She is our producer. Her number is 390-5751. We'd love to have you give us some ideas of what you'd like to see right here on the show. We do have a great show coming up for you today. We're speaking with Amy Swain and, and having a little tour of her center or do something exciting. I don't know. I wasn't there. Leanne was. She'll tell us all about it. And then we're also going to be talking with the Owatonna Hospital. So stick with us. We'll be right back here on the Owatonna Today Show. Hi, I'm Jody Voison with the staff at Fairview Animal Medical Center, your other family doctor. Fairview Animal Medical Center is a proud supporter of the Oatana Today Show. Do you have a fire escape plan for your family? The Oatana Fire Department encourages you to take a minute and make a fire escape plan for your home. The plan should include two ways out of every room in your home. Once outside, do not go back into the house for anything. Practice the plan during the day and in the evening so you understand how to get out of the house when it's dark out. Um, have a central meeting place, a big oak tree or a mailbox to meet at so everyone can be accounted for. This is a fire safety tip from the Owatonna Fire Department. Hi, we're Mark and Becky Stevens of the Owatonna Pizza Ranch. And we support the Owatonna Today Show. It's Leanne on the go for the Owatonna Today Show, and I am here at Amy Swain Hearing Center's office here in Owatonna. Hi, Amy. Welcome back to the show. Hi. Well, thank you for having me once again. <laughs> you bet you, you betcha, as we say here in Minnesota. <laughs> um, what, uh, what do you have in store for us today? Because I understand you've got this great demonstration plan for us, so just take it away. Yeah, well today I thought I would do something that would help people that already wear hearing aids rather than always telling people they should get a hearing aid and how discreet it is and how much better the sound quality is from years ago. Mm -hmm. So what I've decided to do today is to show people that wear hearing aids how to clean them. Most people that come into my office and see me will get that demonstration anytime they want it. You know, they can stop in and, and have me show them how to clean it. They usually get that lesson when they get the hearing aids too, mm -hmm. but I thought why not put it on TV, maybe somebody out there just as curious what am I supposed to be doing with a hearing aid. Okay, and it is a good reminder for those people, like my father has been into you numerous times because he can't remember how to clean his hearing aids, so anyway, so take it away. Okay, well what we've got on here are some, some of the several styles and what I probably need to get, and I wasn't thinking, I need to get a sample of a pier and maybe, um, maybe somebody can find me a pier with a dome and everything on it here so we can do that one in a little bit too. But one of the basic styles of the hearing aids are these custom products, and these custom products the number one reason that these hearing aids fail is because wax gets down in the inside of the instrument. Okay. And so what we want to do is we use what we call a cleaning tip or a cleaning tool. It has a very fine little wire and I don't know if you can get close enough in there to see there's a little wire loop at the end oh, yes. of, the, uh -huh. of, the, of the little stick Looks here. It's kind of like the an eye of a needle. Exactly. Sort of. And so what you do with it is there's a hole that goes down into the ear of the hearing aid um, and that hole is where the speaker of the instrument is. Okay. If earwax gets in there, no sound can come out of the hearing aid. And so what you want to do is to take this little wire loop and put it into the hearing aid, turn it, and pull out any earwax that's in there. Okay. Now, then you would take a Kleenex and just wipe that clean and then maybe go in there again. And it's important to clean out both of those holes. So often, many people will say they only clean the hole that's just a vent that goes all the way through the hearing aid. Okay. And what you really want to do is to clean the one that has the tube because okay. that's where your speaker is at. Okay. And if, 
And, and, and there's no way then that you can damage it if you clean it out that way. Well, so, yeah, no way, to, no way to damage it because that little loop only goes so far into the okay. instrument. Okay. And so I suppose somebody could damage it, you know, if they had a longer wire and really poked really it in there. Really poked it down. But this, okay. this tool is specifically designed to clean out those instruments. And if you don't have one and you have a hearing aid like this, you can swing by my office and pick one up. Um, I don't even mind if you didn't get your hearing aid from me. If you need a tool like this, I'm, I'm happy to give that to you. The manufacturing companies provide these at, at free of charge. So it's okay. not that big of a deal. Just stop in and say, I need a cleaning tool. Okay. Um, that'll help you keep that hearing aid clean. Same thing on the, the smaller ones. Some people have the smaller one. They do this and, and clean that out. Sometimes they'll have like a little wax trap type thing on the end that they can pull off. Oh, okay. And when they pull that off, they can replace it with a new one. My oh, fingers okay. don't want to operate very well, but then you would replace that with a new, a new trap. Okay. Um, same type of thing with the behind the ear instrument. This is your standard behind the ear. A lot of people are going to a thinner tube type fitting, and I'll show you how to clean those in a minute too, because they are different. This one is a behind the ear instrument, and there are no electronics at all in the ear mold. And so you can usually see if there's wax plugging this. Okay. But quite often, people will come in and say, my hearing aid isn't working. 90% of the time on the behind the ear, it's just that there's some wax down in those holes. Okay. So again, the same thing, the little wire loop, get down in there clean out the, the hole if that's plugged with wax, and you just get that cleaned out and then the hearing aid will start up again. Okay. The other thing about a behind the ear is you see this tubing here is pretty flexible. Mm -hmm. That tubing tends to get stiff from time to time, and so what it needs is a new tube. We pull it apart and put a new tube in there so it's not so stiff. Okay. That stiff tube doesn't allow for people to hear as well. Oh, I see, okay. Yeah, so that's, that's kind of an issue. I'm going to step in here and, whoa, I'm knocking my microphone around here. <laughs> but this is the thin tube style that we're talking about that's very, very popular right okay, now. Okay, push in your, I think, the, the, on the receiver pack, push in the, there, there you go. Oh, ho, now I'm back on the you. air. <laughs> okay. okay. So this is the thin receiver tube, tube a thin tube fitting. They have a speaker on the inside of your ear canal. Mm -hmm. And so earwax can get in on the speaker. This style just has a plastic piece here. There's no electronics in that piece. Okay. But this one has the electronics on the piece. And what you want to do is make sure that the end of it is clear. If you can't see those holes and they're plugged with wax, again, no sound can come out of the instrument. Okay. And so what people have to do with this particular product is to actually take off the end of it. And then they're going to have to either clean this, and they can use a, a real fine needle and poke through the holes, okay. or perhaps wash it with soap and water. Um, if you have this type, we're happy to show you. If you want to stop in, we can show you how to clean it. But bottom line is that you cannot have wax. Yeesh, I'm dropping it here. You cannot have wax in those holes. If you have wax in those holes, no sound will come out. Especially because those holes are extremely small. Exactly. Too. Exactly. Now the other thing, if you look really closely at a lot of these products, they'll have a little microphone port here. And underneath that microphone port, there's a little filter. And that filter is very much like a furnace filter. Okay. If it gets clogged up with debris or moisture, just tiny little dead skin flakes, dust, mm -hmm. that type of thing, then you have to take that apart and really get in there to clean that. That's something that I would do. And so that also helps to clean the hearing aid and keep it working well. Okay. This is, is one of my favorite things. It's called the UltraVac. I have revived more hearing aids with this than <laughs> you could ever imagine. What it does is I take the hearing aid, put it in this little jar, uh -huh. and then I turn it on. You can see this little pressure here. It forms a little vacuum chamber. Okay. And it runs for four minutes. And when I take that out of the out of the... UltraVac, most people will say, my hearing aid sounds so much better. What it's doing with that vacuum chamber is totally drying it out, getting all the moisture out of it, taking the moisture off of the microphone screens and the receiver, Okay. and it also is getting rid of some of the dust. Okay. And so you put the hearing aid in, oh my goodness, Amy, that sounds wonderful. So this is another thing where, you know, if you haven't gotten your hearing aid from me, it, it's fine, or if you didn't buy your hearing aid from me, it's fine. 
go ahead and stop in i'll i'll do this for you and see if your hearing aid will sound better because they do lose their crisp nice sound when they get moisture and debris in there it's really amazing what moisture can do to a hearing aid i had no idea that Moisture was, besides the dust and the earwax and, and the dirt, was a major enemy of hearing aids functioning properly. Yeah, humidity, perspiration, they, they're all hard on hearing aids. The number one reason a hearing aid fails is because of humidity, perspiration, or earwax. And that's why hearing aids are kind of touchy. So many people become very disappointed and, and frustrated because they're always feeling like they're bringing their hearing aid in for a problem that mm -hmm. has to be fixed. And 99% of the time, it's either moisture or earwax. So it's really a simple fix for them. Yeah, take it right. into where you got it and have them clean it up. If they're no longer available or you can't get to them, you can bring it in. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll help you clean it up okay. for you. The other thing this machine does is it's a little vacuum. And I can vacuum out. I won't turn it on again because it's kind of noisy. But you can vacuum out the wax, too. Oh, sweet. Um, just a fine little needle thing, and it has a little suction on it. So okay. this, this machine is, a, is my, my baby as far as helping to keep hearing aids clean and working well All for right. people. So, you know, I found out my father got hearing aids from you, I think it's probably been a, a year? year. A year or so. And I think one of the biggest things for him was... He just had to be consistent with his maintenance of his hearing aids. Yes. And I think he's finally gotten that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that kind of thing. But, but, but you do, and you, just, you have to add that to your morning routine. Yes, you, you really do. And, and that's why I, I try to keep my door open for people to stop in so they can have those questions and get them answered. Because, yeah, if they're not taking care of the hearing aid and keeping the wax out of it, they're not going to hear with those instruments. Right. Well, we've got about 30 seconds left, and I just, as a testimonial for you, since my father um, has been one of your clients, it has been such a joy for our family to be able to have him to hear everything we're saying, and we don't have to raise our voices, and we don't have to repeat. And it, in fact, kind of the biggest joke that I have with him is sometimes when I'm around him, I'll automatically go back to that louder tone of voice, and he'll go, Leanne. Yeah, and that's okay. I've got my hearing aids in. And it's just, you know, if you've been sitting on the fence about getting a hearing aid, do it. it do yourself a favor. Do your family a favor. So, Amy, give us your contact information like, one more time. Contact inf information is, is Amy Swain Hearing Centers, and the phone number is 451-3879. And I'm located in the shopping mall where Tori's is at. Okay. All right. Well, Amy, thank you so much. Uh, wonderful tips today on care for your hearing aids. And we look forward to having you back on the show in another couple months. Okay. Thank you. Hi. This is Dave Efforts with TPS Insurance, and we are proud supporters of the Owatonna Today Show. Hello. My name is Shannon Cliff. I'm the Patient Services Manager at Mayo Clinic Health System in Owatonna. I'd like to talk with you about our same-day clinic. Starting at 7 o'clock, you can call into the clinic where we will look for an appointment with your primary care provider. The second option, we would look to our same-day clinic to book an appointment. The third option would then be to have you walk into our facility to be seen. If you have any questions regarding same-day appointments, we'd be happy to answer them. Please call 451-1120. I needed more than just another dead-end job. I wanted a career, so I expressed myself. With the kids off to college, I decided it was time for me to go back to work and express myself. Express got me in touch with some really great companies. Now, I'm on my way to a great career. Express Employment Professionals is in contact with thousands of companies in need of quality employees. Come in now and get the job you deserve. Express yourself today. Hi, I'm Doug Johnson with the Otana Business Incubator. We're here to help small businesses start and to grow. We're a proud sponsor of the Otana Today Show. Hi, my name is Dave Olson and I'm with RNK Electric where we provide power to the people. We're proud supporters of the Otana Today Show. I'm Mark Woodrich with Steel County Blades Junior Hockey. Come back to the orange and black. We'll see you at the rink. The Steel County Blades are very proud supporters of the Oatana Today Show. And we're back with the Oatana Today Show. I have with me from the Oatana Hospital, Alina, I have Kim Glasgow, Jody Kaiser, and Ann Drager. 
Did I do that right? You yes, did. you did. <laughs> Hello, ladies. Good morning. It's hard. Morning. It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> but I try. That's all it can give me. So thank you so much for joining us today. We're actually talking about a new program at the hospital. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little <coughs> bit about that today. So first of all, if you wouldn't mind, I have already you know, named you, but if you tell us your name again and what you do at the hospital, and then we'll kind of get into the program. So go ahead. My name's Kim Glasgow, and I'm a registered nurse at the Owatonna Hospital and also a sexual assault nurse examiner. Okay, good. And my name is Jody Kaiser. I'm the assistant patient care manager of the emergency department. Okay. And I'm Ann Dreger. I'm the director of patient care. I'm what used to be the head nurse of the hospital. <laughs> so they've renamed you? We've renamed you. <laughs> so more of the times. Do you, get a, do you have better business cards now, too? <laughs> well, they match. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I want to talk about this program because it's brand new, mm -hmm. and it's something that the area has needed even though people haven't talked about it. So go ahead, Kim, tell us a little bit about the program that you are helping, being a part of, actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, the Sexual Assault Nurse Examiner Program, or SANE program at the Owatonna Hospital, is a program dedicated to the victims of sexual assault. Um, and in the Owatonna community, we see probably 25 victims of sexual assault per year, so there is a need for it. And what the program does is if you are assaulted within 120 hours or five days, you can come to the emergency room and a nurse will be called in from home to specially take care of just you. Um, the nurse will be performing the exam and also providing you with resources to counselors and guidance through the law system. We also provide prophylactic treatment for any sexually transmitted infections that you could have contacted from the contact or the assault. Define for me sexual assault, because I think sometimes, we, we were talking a little bit earlier, so people think it's just rape, but it's much more than that. Yes. Sexual assault is not just rape. Sexual assault can be any unwanted touching or contact from another person. It can be, and it does not have to be just male on female, it can be female to female, male to male, mm -hmm. female to male, it can be boyfriends, it can be your friend, it can be your husband, it can be anybody. And so the program is set up for anyone who feels like they've been assaulted to come into the emergency mm -hmm. room. And yep. then what happens when they come in? When they come in, um, we give them the option of getting a forensic exam. And what the forensic exam is doing is collecting any evidence that we can find from the contact or the assault. And this could even be we will collect urine and blood samples if there was maybe drugs involved or if um, like date rape drugs mm -hmm. is very commonly heard of um, and that is all sent up to the Bureau of Criminal Investigation in the cities. Um, to be processed. So we do not process anything at the hospital. You just collect the evidence. We just collect it. Okay, yes. and so that and that evidence itself is for people who will press charges. Yes. But you, the exam isn't just for that. No, the exam is really to protect the patient. Um, the patient having that contact could have been exposed to any number of infections, any number of injuries. We identify injuries and treat prophylactically for any infections that they could have contact or even um, a pregnancy which could have happened. Mm -hmm. Now Jody, this is an, a new program to the hospital so before we, you treat the patient the best you can but now you're taking that next step having dedicated nurses to the program. Tell me a little bit about the training that had to take place to be prepared for this program. Sure, currently at the Otana Hospital we have four um, SANE nurses and they Only are... Four, I'm sorry, it yep. just is funny, SANE nurses, the rest of them are little... Sexual kids. assault <laughs> nurses. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. I know, but come on. <laughs> we, do, we do have four and they are on call 24-7, um, so what they did was have 40 hours of education and training up at United, up in Fridley, correct? Unity. Unity, okay. up in Fridley. And 40 hours of training up there. And they also spent time with our um, obstetrician, gynecologist at the male health systems here at the clinic for some pelvic training. Um, they did some, had some one-to-one, -one hands-on training um, doing that. So how is this different from just a nurse working in the emergency room before the program started? Well, the, the sexual assault nurse examiners are specialized for just these exams, um, where before we would have the physicians or 
um, the nurses in the emergency department do these exams and the patient was unable, we were unable to give them the one-to-one -one attention that they deserve and that they needed. Mm. So it, it, if the emergency room was very busy and they just could not spend the time that these that these victims needed. Well, let's, I'd let, I think that's so important for people who maybe know someone who has been sexually assaulted or may in the future. That dedication, talk a little bit about how that can help somebody's peace of mind when they come into the emergency room. Well, I think just the one-to-one, -one, you know, and having a nurse, you know, nurses have that bedside manner mm -hmm. just for the support. They need that support. Mm -hmm. And we also get the support from the Crisis Resource Center in, in, the, in the county. So they, they need that support. They deserve that. And so this is just taking one step further, giving them the insulated. I think because when you've been a victim, there, there's so much fear involved in that, mm -hmm. to have that insulated time frame to protect yourself and, and feel like you're safe. Yep, correct. Good. So they not only give them the physical support, they give them the psychological support well, as well. And, and I want to talk to you about that section part of it because she t mentioned the Crisis Resource Center. It's not just the physical exam part, but you've actually um, worked with other community organizations to bring this process about. Talk a little bit about that. Sure, and what is really key is the Crisis Resource Center and we've worked with them. I've um, been around the emergency room in Oatana for about 26 years. So, and we've had a long-standing relationship with the Crisis uh, Resource Center. We train their advocates, uh, particularly around this aftercare, um, after an assault happens. And so, uh, and they're just critical. We contact them right when the victim comes in. Um, and that advocate is part of that experience, but then they also help the uh, victim in those days following and weeks following. So the victim may need an order for protection, assistance with gaining that. Um, they also have groups um, of other people who've had uh, the same experience to sort of share and get that network of support. And then also we work very collaboratively with the police department um, and so we you know the evidence is secured it's passed back and forth if the victim chooses not at that moment to press charges um, the police come gather the kit and then it's stored um, for safekeeping until the victim makes that decision and so uh, you know very good working rapport with them as well and um, you know having these trained nurses is just means the world for our patients and it also uh, the patient knows then it's not this uh, busy emergency room staff that's you know may have other crisis going on um, but instead it's a person that's just there for them well and I think you hit on something very important is that sometimes people it's so scary they don't know what to do or where to go and so they have to understand they're not going to be pressured into making charges at that point but they mm -hmm. just need to be able to make sure they're safe absolutely Absolutely. So, and they don't need to connect with the police first. They can just come to the emergency room. Um, often, that's your inclination. Um, mm -hmm. So, it's it's the right place to come and and get the care you need. So, I would let's go back to you, Kim. You actually mm -hmm. been through the training. Yes. Um, and you, it sounded like a very intensive four day training. Was it five days? Five yeah. days. Forty hours. Forty hours. Mm -hmm. Talk to us a little bit about some of the things that surprised you in the training that you weren't quite expecting. Um, being a nurse, we're always trained in caring for the whole person, psychologically, medically, the whole person as a whole. And through the training, we really got a lot of information on how to care for them as a survivor mm -hmm. of sexual assault and what that means to them and how they will go forward and live their life after mm -hmm. this assault. So we're not just providing a snapshot service for them. We're providing a service that will springboard them um, for care for the rest of their life. Yeah, and uh, Jody, as, as you move forward in this program, do you see more training of, involved, maybe more nurses involved? Uh, what do you see as the future moves forward? For the program? Well, I think since we have this program um, at the hospital and having you show this on your program today, it might, you know, I think we're going to be seeing more. Right now we're averaging 25 um, assaults a year and unfortunately I think that's going to increase so mm -hmm. I guess time will tell if we need more and if we feel the need is there we will we will look into that. Okay and Anne, one last since you were working with some of the community people tell me if someone sees, has seen this program today and they want to volunteer what options would they have? 
You know, the best place for um, people to volunteer is through the Crisis Resource Center, either your time or your dollars. Mm -hmm. um, but they are always training advocates. And this is just a small piece of the advocate role, but uh, obviously an important one. So, yeah. uh, but that is, that is the best place to donate your time um, or your dollars. Thank you, ladies, so much for your time today. I appreciate it. And I know this Thank is an you. important uh, issue to talk about, and it's a great way to handle it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And Thank we'll be you. right back with the Owatonna Today Show. Hi, Warren Abraham, Abraham Consulting Technologies, your one-stop technology shop. We support the Otana Today Show. Otana Public Utilities, real people, real reliable, real progress. Making life a little easier day after day. Taking pride in our community, listening to what you say. A voice you can talk to. We're growing with you, with you in mind in everything we do. Oh, a ton of public utilities. Hello, I'm Sean McNulty. And I'm Deb Gillard with Brookdale Senior Living, Sterling House, and Claire Bridge of Owatonna. And we are a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. And we're back with the Owatonna Today Show. A few announcements for your community area. Meals of Hope is a community meal for anyone that may need a hot meal during this uh, season. Sunday evenings from 5 to 6 at Trinity Lutheran Church. If you'd like more information, you can always call the church at 451-5240. The Autism Spectrum Disorder Parent Group is uh, coming up this Tuesday, January 22nd. This is a great opportunity for anyone who may have an autistic child to get together and talk to those. If you've just been diagnosed, this is a perfect place to start to understand what that is going to mean to you and your family in the future or can mean. It is also a great place for anyone who has had an autistic child to come to and share their expertise. This is at, from 6 to 7.30 at the Associated Church in Owatonna. And child care is available, but you need to contact the church and let them know that you need it prior. That is this January 22nd at 6 o'clock at the Associated Church. And the USO dance is coming up this week. It's the, at the, for the History Center. As we've had them on our show, it's a great, beautiful place for you to kind of go and, and learn a little bit more about Steele County, but they're having their USO dance this Friday, the 25th. It's going to be a lot of fun. They have kids' activities as well as adults. And the great thing is it's an opportunity for them to raise mon money so that they can burn their mortgage within a year of building the center. It's so cool, and I would love for you to be, become a part of it. They've got the Minnesota Real Big Band. They've also got the Owatonna High School Jazz Band and the Blooming Prairie Jazz Band. A lot of fun. There's dance contests. It's just a great time to go and also get a chance to see their uh, World War II setup that they have there for the Owatonna area because we've had a lot of experience with people here. So that's a great thing. Now, I also want to let you know there's the Storytelling <coughs> Folk Literature Workshop at the Owatonna Senior Place that's coming up uh, January 29th and February 12th. These are opportunities for you if you like telling stories but just don't know where to start. And this is a great opportunity to do that. Tuesday, January 29th from 6 to 9 and Tuesday, February 12th from 6 to 9. These are both at the Owatonna Senior Center. and. Um, it's two dollars just to cover the cost of the snacks but the rest of it is free and the workshop is presented by Kevin Strauss he is a professional storyteller he's had CDs and books and he's going to give people the tools to do that we do want to thank you for joining us today remember that you can also like us on Facebook and win a pair of tickets to the Steel County Blades home hockey game which right now it's warmer in the hockey arena than outside so why not go get warmed up watching hockey and so we'd love for you to like us on Facebook if you already have liked us or don't have Facebook send us an email at owatonna today, today at charter.net we'll be back on Wednesday thanks so much see you then <laughs>